Well, I think we're going to get started with uh, getting your ultrasound done. So we'll have you come on here. I want to introduce uh, Michael. Uh, as okay. Well. Uh, and all right. So this is going to be basically an, an imaging of the uh, of of the actual musculature or the uh, ultrasound the imaging of your heart muscle. We're also mm -hmm. going to look at your carotid arteries, which is mm -hmm. a great uh, place to visualize mm -hmm. uh, the buildup of uh, plaque, right. atherosclerotic plaque. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we'll also take a look at your your abdominal aorta, which is another place. Right. And then uh, your your arteries, uh, okay. your lower legs. Okay. Absolutely. Great. So, uh, how you doing? My I'm name doing is Michael well. Crowley. Good nice to meet you, Michael. Michael. CardioVision. So, we're going to be doing your ultrasound today. Okay. Um, so, it will require uh, you to remove your shirt for me, if you All right. Mind. I think I should be able to do that. I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a mic, but we can get creative here. And uh, there are plenty of places I can attach this, including my beautiful mask. And as we progress through the rest of the testing, which will include uh, going to the treadmill, where we'll hook you up. Uh, and all of that stuff so definitely. okay and uh brandon i'm attaching this this uh lab mic to my mask now you should still be able to hear okay check check one two three mic check mic check one two three all right cool all right excellent so we'll go ahead and have you lie on back with your head on the pillow there now one thing that i that i know many healthy active people will find on a on a uh, ultrasound like this is a uh, enlarged uh, heart ventricle, uh, also known as athlete's heart, or uh, correct me if I'm wrong, doc, uh, acromegaly yeah. or, or uh, cardiomegaly. Car car cardiomegaly. Cardiomegaly. Yeah, we we we, we see this uh, not infrequently with uh, our athletes, and I think part of this is that we take some very specific uh, measures on the ultrasound some physiologic parameters to assess whether this is creating an impact uh, on, on cardiac performance or it's sort of part of that athletic heart pattern. So mm -hmm. some of this is a little technical, but we can walk through it. Uh, but it wouldn't be surprising to see some thickening of the, of the walls, uh, what we call hypertrophy, concentric hypertrophy. But as right. I mentioned, there will be some right. patterns that we can tell to see if yeah. this is uh, abnormal or, or not. Yeah. Great. Um, we're going to go ahead and roll it over, you over a little bit on your left side so that you're facing okay. toward me, please. Okay. Like so? Like so. Great. We're okay. going to get that left arm up. We're going to get you into a nice, comfortable position. Okay. This is your best Titanic position for me. All right. There Got it. There you go. Perfect. And uh, if we don't mind production, if we could kill the lights uh, just behind you there. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks like coming in. Oh. Thank you. Perfect. Now, of course, my mom always told me I had a big heart. We'll find out. <laughs> and how, how tall and how much do you weigh? We'll put that in because all of the measurements mm -hmm. will be normalized to your body mass sure. index and so forth. Yeah. So we can we can. Yeah. And get the body surface area calculation. Yeah, I'm, I'm six foot two and 181 pounds. Okay, got it. All right, so this is an ultrasound. So just like when they look at a baby, mm -hmm. um, we're going to be actually looking at your heart and all the mm -hmm. mechanics within the heart, the valves, the walls, the mm -hmm. chambers. Um, we even have the ability um, to turn on something that we call color flow, which is a Doppler. Uh, so just mm -hmm. like they use some sonar, etc. Um, so we can actually watch the blood flow going wow. through the heart. Um, so we can look at those leaky valves or things that would cause that heart to enlarge. Mm -hmm. And then the best part is, is we can take those visions that we see with the color uh, and we can actually measure that. So wow. we can actually see the velocities that are going through the valves. Wow, amazing. Mm -hmm. Yep, so here we go. It's going to be a little cold. Not too bad. Well, for all those viewers out there that did wonder, he does have a heart. I have a heart. You have a heart. Great images. Reminds me of when my wife was pregnant. We went in and she said, you have a baby. Although in her case, there were two. Now, is it common, Doc, when you, when you bring in healthy people, athletes, exercising individuals, that you do indeed find things they may have been unaware of or... You do indeed find issues that would have surprised 
you know, the average person for, for a healthy, you yeah, know, quote, I, healthy, unquote, active person to have? I, th I think it's about 50-50, mm. you know, and I think what's really important is to look at family history um, yeah. because you can be totally help healthy, have normal cholesterol, mm -hmm. and then you actually have, when we do some of the scanning and so forth, we do a calcium score, we find out that there is um, atherosclerotic plaque developing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's something where it's early enough for those folks that are that are younger that they can really alter the trajectory of the disease yeah yeah i think it's interesting i believe it was james o'keefe who i listened to lecture at the uh, ancestral health symposium i believe and he was speaking to arterial stiffness in athletes particularly endurance athletes and he was finding when it comes to cardiovascular mortality a law of diminishing returns in terms of heart health once uh, someone was exceeding about 60 minutes of uh, intense, moderately high yeah. physical activity per day and about 90 minutes of aerobic activity, and uh, he was actually uh, finding markers of, of inflammation, uh, atherosclerosis, yeah. and arterial stiffness in people who were overdoing it. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true, and there's yeah. increasing data that th those folks can have accelerated yeah. atherosclerosis, their yeah. calcium scores can start to... Uh, be elevated out of proportion to yeah. someone in, 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 yeah. in their age and gender. Yeah. So uh, we do see that. And I think it's a certain type of inflammation depending on, you know, I think there's an exercise type for every body that's, that's mm -hmm. really optimum. Yeah. Kind of find that out and figure that yeah. out is going to be key. And, you know, yeah. and there are confining variables too. Like that, that's also a population who's eating oodles of pasta and scones and, yep. you know, and, and uh, in many cases, you know, very active person is also a, Someone who uh, is inducing a, a certain amount of uh, insulin insensitivity and you know rampant levels of blood glucose and other issues just related to uh, the uh, the training to eat and eating to train phenomenon. Right. Yeah, and I think uh, it's interesting your take. You know, when people train for marathons, they do a huge amount of carb loading. Yeah. What kind of stress that puts on the on your system and your liver and right. so forth? They're trying to load up on glycogen and right. yeah so, oh i i know many cyclists yeah. who pretty much live on on you know three glasses of wine at night after they've ridden and a, you know a bunch of bread and pasta during the day and you know they're consuming 70 to 80 percent carbohydrates which you know, in, in many cases i don't think does you many favors from a mm -hmm. from a from a lipid oxidation standpoint correct correct That or, or a very, very high intake of pupas, you know, which, which, you know, I was recently over in India, you know, where, where they're seeing a lot of obesity and cardiovascular disease, even though the carbohydrate intake has not appreciably risen. You know, a lot of the natural cooking oils like ghee and coconut and extra virgin olive oil have been replaced by vegetable oils. So that could be the... Mm -hmm. the fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I personally, from the data I've seen, think that polyunsaturated fats and some of these linoleic acids and other sources of vegetable oil is, are just as big a culprit for things like diabetes and insulin resistance as carbohydrates. You know, I think you, you raise a good point. Um, you know, we've always uh, advocated in the cardiology community plant-based Mediterranean diet and mm -hmm. uh, uh, olive oil, that type of thing. Now, there's certain um, purists, um, Calvo Lesselstein and his group in Cleveland yeah. that really suggest no, no cooking oil because yeah. there's a concern about when you, when you cook things in oil and so forth, there's, there's damage to the endothelium yep. that can occur. And so, uh, and we can see that with some of the, the testing that, that, that we can do. Uh, but it's hard because these are not the most accessible tests to sort of a general population. Yeah, but uh, it's there, and it's uh, there's some really good uh, validated uh, data sets coming out of that. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, I, I certainly opt for heat stability, but that's always crossed my mind. Is you know, would would less oil in general be better? You know, even if the even if the oils are stable, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I think a large part of that could be genetic too. I think you know, populations that have subsisted on whatever, you know, whale blubber like the Inuit or, or, you know, high amounts of marbly fat or, you know, milk and blood like the Maasai warriors, they might be more genetically adapted to, to those types of, type of fats. Yeah, I think anytime you're dumping a bunch of oil into a hot skillet and cooking something, it's, you're increasing risk. Right. No matter Absolutely. the smoke point. 
Although it's it's hard to have a good pork belly though that 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 hasn't been cooked in a little bit of fat to get it crispy. And so as you go through this ultrasound, you're simply identifying different areas, taking a photo, listening. Exactly. So what we do is uh, we have a, a specific protocol that, that we mm -hmm. follow um, mm -hmm. that Dr. Dandelai is used to. So it's a series mm -hmm. of images. Um, and then we uh, take each chamber and each valve and then do a set of diagnostics. Mm -hmm. So we'll use the color and watch the blood flow. Right. Um, and then the sound that you've been hearing is the Doppler. So that's right. us taking you know, actual measurements of the velocity through the valve. Mm -hmm. um, and so remember, we're checking the valve for two things. We're checking for function, so making sure that it's opening and closing uh, right. correctly. It's not prolapsing. Right. Uh, it's not stenotic, meaning mm -hmm. a heavy calcification mm -hmm. where that valve can't open and close. Um, or sometimes they just get a little piece of calcium on it um, and the valve leaks, kind of mm -hmm. like a faucet in the house. Right. So, you know, routinely we do the echocardiograms to monitor chamber sizes, valve mm -hmm. regurgitations, and then the progressing uh, of those abnormalities. Mm -hmm. hmm. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. And then you're also pairing some of these parameters with uh, with actual blood work as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll do a, uh, a, an advanced lipid panel, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. goes beyond our traditional lipid panel, which has really been been there for decades. Right. Um, so you're you're actually looking at lipid particles. particle size, particle yeah. count. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to do that for you because you know we've seen that observation that just. Standard lipids alone can underestimate risk. Yeah. And this is where we pair it with things like the calcium score, endothelial function, uh, and we can get a great composite mm -hmm. of, of risk above and yeah. down. And there's some fascinating um, things in the advanced lipid panel, things like LP little a, yeah. CMAO, um, yeah. the particles that uh, we can we can deep dive when we get your results. Yeah. your training regimen in general these days uh a lot of walking i probably walk uh anywhere from five to seven miles a day uh, just just uh while talking on the phone or consulting with people or recording and uh typically um uh, sauna uh, four or five times a week um some kind of a cold soak after for anywhere from two to five minutes and you know often another cold shower or jump into a cold river or cold tub uh, later on in the day and then about uh, four times a week I'll do uh, about a around a 45 minute long uh, kind of like kettlebell or strength training session or a high intensity interval training session or something that's a little bit more of a of a difficult workout and then uh, aside from that uh, you know some tennis with the family usually a hike on the weekends and uh, yeah, I'd say the uh, the hardest thing I do is uh, those those you know four sessions a week where I'll, you know like a Monday Tuesday Thursday Friday I'll yeah. you know go to the garage and crush the kettlebells or you know, do a lot of you know sandbags unwieldy objects carries I, I quit racing professionally last year and so uh so i do a lot less of the extremely hard voluminous intense training sure you know, there was a time when i was probably getting close to about 16 to 18 hours a week though you know when i was racing triathlon for example mm -hmm. you know. but yeah no now it's uh it's primarily walking some kettlebells some sauna some cold and then just a little bit of sports here and there in between. Yeah. You know, tennis, paddle boarding, hiking, things like that. Take a, take a deep breath in for me. Good, and blow it out. Good, okay. 
All right, so that is test one complete. Before I do more testing, I'm going to need... Oh, yeah. Uh, 1220, 1981. Okay. I'm at 12.5. December 5th? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. All well, this edges One thing that I thought might be cool, you know, once we've done all of this and, you know, whether it's, you know, a week from now or, you know, whenever we've kind of got all the, uh, results, all the results yeah. standing or ready for a summary we can debrief, yeah. is, uh, I was thinking, you know, I'll, I'll do a lot of like recorded podcasts where I'll, I can Skype you or call you and we can do like a 15, 20 minute That'd be fun. debrief. It's kind of like, you know, tack on the audio at the end, okay, cool. you know, put, put a little bow on everything for people. Yeah, that would be great. So, I'll, uh. There'll be a lot to unpack. Go ahead and lay on your back. Okay. We're doing products? Yeah. Okay. And if you're getting any photos at all, Vanessa, you can feel free to uh, send them at some point and maybe I'll, I'll post a couple to Instagram. All right, chin up for me. 